Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and welcome to this video. Now this is uh, Lars Anderson Archery Is It Real Part 2. So if you've not seen Part uh, 1, please go back and watch that and get up to speed with where we are. Now first of all, I'd like to say I do not agree with Lars Anderson on everything, not at all. And I, I must admit, I do think maybe people have misunderstood his video or he's maybe misrepresented it unintentionally or intentionally. I'll leave that up to you guys. But I do think he has raised some really important questions and I do think they need raising. So the problem has become that too many people are saying he's either right, he's correct, or he's wrong. There's no in the middle here anymore. And some people are saying, oh, he's just a trick shot. And other people are saying, oh, he's a fraud. And other people are saying, oh, what he says is totally correct. And I think it's that's too much of a simplistic way to look at it. So if I want to concentrate today on uh, some things that have been going around the internet due to his video. Now, first of all, what I agree with in his claims is simply that um, archery is probably more dynamic than you first realised. Uh, he's working from Sarsen Archery, basically. His main text is uh, this Sarsen Archery text, which I have been and read. I spoke to Lars, got information, I went to the library and I read a copy of it. Very interesting stuff, amazing stuff, actually. You should read a copy. So he is working from some historical documents. But what I also agree with is the fact that maybe, just maybe, in the West, uh, archers used to shoot from both the left and the right of the bow. Maybe, I think, it, he is right that it wasn't standardised in the sense that they, not all Western people shot from the left and all Eastern people shot from the right. Maybe in the West, some people shot from the right as well. Now, one of the main things that's come up from this, and what I'm finding people are commenting on, making videos about, doesn't make any sense to me. And they're saying, in short, that Lars Anderson has said that you shoot a bow on the right in the west, or it's possible to shoot a bow on the right in the west. And their answer to this is, no it's not, Archer's Paradox. Or you get, don't be stupid, Archer's Paradox. I think people need to understand what Archer's Paradox is, or how it applies to the argument. So what I'll do is, I'll, first of all, explain Archer's Paradox. So what we've got here is a 60 pound longbow English, just basically a practice bow. And as you can see, the string is directly behind the bow. It's directly behind. There's the string. When you put it straight out, the string is absolutely directly behind the bow. There's no other place it can be. It has to be behind the bow. So modern bows have a cutout here, or whichever side they have it on, they have a cutout. That means the arrow is directly in line with the string. But as you can see here, it's not. On a traditional bow, the arrow, uh, sorry, the string is directly behind the bow, which means the arrow has to go to the left. If you put it on the left side, it, it moves to the left, there's a small angle. If you put it on the right side, it goes out to the right. It physically cannot go straight forward because the bow is in the way. With the bow in the way, the arrow can't go straight forward. So what happens is you get Archer's Paradox. I can't draw the, draw the bow in here, it's too short. Uh, this ceiling's too short. But as you draw back and you release, the arrow, as you draw back and you release, the arrow pushes off and gets pushed to the left. And as it gets pushed to the left, it comes off. Let me just shift that. As it gets pushed to the left, it comes off. And then it starts, because the force is right behind it, and because it wants to go left, but you're trying to push it forward, the arrow starts to bend and oscillate and it'll do this in mid-flight. Because the pressure pushes the arrow up, it bends down, it's also spinning, which means it, it curves around the bow. It literally, you watch a slow motion video and it bends about that much as it comes around the bow to force off straight. What this means is that you, your arrow is pushed to the left, or if you're shooting on the right, your arrow's push to the right. So the archer's paradox is the fact that the string is behind the bow, but the arrow is going left, but it wants to go straight because the string's telling it to go straight. So it's a paradox. It's been pushed out of its way and it readjusts for that, if you will, by bending and warping, but it still goes left. If you shoot from the right, the, the arrow still goes right. So Archers have known about this since the year dot. It's not one of those things where Archer's Paradox, it doesn't work. You can't just say, it doesn't work, Archer's Paradox. What you've got is people adjust for it. They'll go to shoot and they shift the bow over to the right very slightly. And the, the, obviously the, 
the more you draw back the bow, the, the wider the angle, uh, sorry, the narrower the angle is, the less you draw back the bow, the wider it goes out. You, as an archer, have to adjust for the archer's paradox. And you have to adjust for the fact that your arrow is on the left or it's on the right. So you pull, you move slightly to the right, in it goes. Or you pull, draw, move slightly to the right, uh, to the left, in it goes, depending on which side your arrow is on. So Lars has said, you know, he thinks that in Western archery, people may have shot on the right. Now, I'm toning his words down here because these are mine, you know, I'm trying to get across. People may have shot from the right. And people have replied to him saying, no, it's impossible, archer's paradox. And you're like, that just makes no sense whatsoever. If you shoot on the left, you sometimes see war archers, if you will, or, you know, modern day war archers where they're trying to recreate the longbow as it was. They'll pull back and you see them almost shoot it off like this. And it'll be, they'll shoot it off. And what this does is they curl their hand to the right. And this allows the string to fly directly, you know, in a line. So the arrow leaves. They, they will let go of the string and move the bow ever so slightly and flick it. This is trying to generate more power. But also it shifts the bow ever so slightly out of the way. So you get less of an archer's paradox. This is the same in Japanese archery. If you put the bow, the arrow on the right when you're doing Japanese archery and you shoot the bow, you, you, they flick the exact same thing as they flick and the string goes around this side. The reason it does this is they pull the arrow, the bow, out of the way and flick it and it gets rid of the archer's paradox. The, hence the, the, the arrow can't, it has to go around the bow. They, they twist it out of the way and which gives the string a clear path because this is on two points and as you twist it out of the way that string stays on its direct route. And of course, you don't need to get too scientific about this. The human body can totally feel what's going on. If you practice and practice and practice, you're like, yeah, I want it to go over there. Your body knows the minute movements it needs to make to get the arrow behind, uh, the string behind the arrow going in a straight line. Or if you leave the bow there, it knows how much you have to go to the left or have to go to the right, because you've trained to do it, that's the point. You might not know the physics of it, you might not know the, um, intellectual breakdown of it but you clearly know it's there because you've been shooting your bow for 30 years and you know that's how you get it in the target so my point is when people say no Lars Anderson you can't shoot on the right because of Archer's Paradox what they're saying doesn't make any sense you can shoot from either side and Archer's Paradox is always there some people say it's more prevalent on the left some people say it only exists on the left some people say it's not so much on the right but basically the the very essence is that the bow is in the way of the, the arrow. If, you know, the bow is there, the string is there, it's, the string goes to the bow, the arrow gets knocked to the left, gets knocked to the right. So archers across all the centuries have adjusted for this with little tricks, little changes, little twists, little maneuvers, whatever you want, they've adjusted for it. So to simply say, uh, Lars Anderson, they don't shoot on the left because of archers paradox, makes no sense. It exists it doesn't matter, it doesn't change anything. You can simply shoot on the right, not a problem, and it's still the same. You have to adjust for the arrow going round the bow. Not an issue at all. Like I said in my first video, I'm actually very open to um, the fact that the West, we used to shoot on the right. Now, I looked through my library, uh, which is mainly Japanese stuff, but I looked through the, the European stuff I have, and there are some actual, quite a lot of the documents that were, well, quite a lot of the illustrated manuals I saw were, um, not manuals, illustrated scrolls I saw were very much predominantly right side shooting in the west but that's only my limited selection i even went outside of you know um war pictures and i went for pictures done by famous artists at the time who'd got models or whatever and they were also on the right um i still if you're now shouting at me that oh, an artist doesn't know how to shoot an archery go see video one i explain all that in video one we have to do a massive search of everything so just a quick round up to this part is I'd like to knock a nail on the head of this idea of everybody shouting the word Archer's Paradox. It doesn't change anything. It, to me, I am not against or for Lars Anderson in the sense of I am, you know, when I, I am totally open to reinterpreting history and I think it's great that we do this. I have taken from Lars's video is the fact that uh, at different times in different places, archery was shot differently. I know I know some people have argued that's not what he's saying, but this is what I'm taking from it, is that we think the idea of the, the, the English archer stood there with his barrel chest and his boom, one, boom, two, 
is yes real, but I do think there are, there's more dynamic movement to warfare. I think once he's done that and he's getting closer, what's to stop him to start picking people off? But the point is this, is the fact that it's not so static. There is a difference. It's not how we imagine it. Not that what we imagine is wrong, that they all stand there in a line and shooting. I don't agree that that's wrong. I think that's right. But what we don't realise is that there's more to it than that. You add on the other bits. Archers going hunting, if you will, if they're allowed to hunt in that time, or on the war band. There's all these like different elements we have to take in. And, it's, and each time is for different time periods, different areas. The problem we have is that Lars has made a, a broad statement across. And there are so many different cultures that use archery in so many different ways. And I think people have forgotten that Lars has taken his from Saracen archery from archery in that area. And what he's saying is that maybe in other parts of the world they also use this type of archery. And he's also saying that maybe they did this hand draw. You know, this idea that people drew from the hand and from arrows in the hand, which nobody is addressing. Everybody's forgetting that point. They're all saying, oh, quivers did exist, and they're all saying, you know, this. And yes, I agree, Lars is wrong in that. They do exist, they are there. But that doesn't mean to say he's wrong in the fact that some cultures outside of the Saracen culture were using this three arrows in the hand shot. What we need to do is stop bickering with each other and find those things. So point one, how many pictures in the West have archers shooting from the right? If it's 90 95%, 80%, 70%, you're looking at that's the truth, you know, predominantly they shot from the right. Even if the, uh, the artist never saw it, if too many people make the same mistake, it's because that's what it was. Yep, or they've copied from a single source. I said this in the last video. So that's point one. Point two is, are there any references, any shots in Western archery of people holding arrows in the hand while shooting? Can anybody find any? It doesn't matter where you get them from, if you Google search them or you go into a cave and find them or whatever. If you find them, you find them. Let's see them. Yep. So, that's what we've got. Western archers may have shot from the right. It does appear in military man uh, sorry, it does appear in historical manuals. It's right there. So Instead of arguing who is right, Lars or the other people, we need to actually count them. Somebody count them. Uh, the other thing is, archers, do they have arrows in the right? Somebody go find pictures of this. Did this happen in the West? And let's actually move this on instead of just trying to, you know, get against each other. So I hope you enjoyed that. My name's Anthony Cummins. Subscribe here if you want to know more, but I mainly do Japanese and samurai things. Uh, some ninja thrown in there if you're interested in that. Okay guys, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, let's try and move this forward instead of moving in on each other. And I hope to listen or read some of your comments below.